Hey everybody, your child doesn't look autistic. How many times have you heard that? As a parent or a caretaker of someone with ASD, I'm sure you get sick of hearing it. I certainly do. So it's kind of a catch-22 when you have a higher functioning kid because a lot of times they, they pass as normal. We're gonna talk more about passing, but they look normal to others, they behave normal. Maybe they've got a few sentences down that they've scripted. They've memorized how to, to first initiate contact between people. So when people see your kid, they're like, oh, they seem fine. I would have never guessed they're autistic. Why did you say they're autistic? Or maybe they doubt you, or maybe they're just trying to be nice. Like, oh, he's not that autistic. I mean, like, it's not that big of a deal, right? So they try to downplay it in order to be nice. Well, even when they're trying to be nice, it actually undermines a lot of uh, what we feel as parents. Um, ASD. We're not, we're not offended. I don't like the offended generation. I've told you guys that in other videos. In a way, it's just, I, I don't know what the right word is, belittling or uh, unfeeling or unsympathetic, but it just makes us feel like you really can't relate to us because you're just like, oh, your kid's not that autistic. So yeah, in short, we feel invalidated, like people don't get us. Um, again, sometimes it, the motives are good and people are trying to be nice. Um, sometimes it's just because people don't believe autism is real or that the vast majority of people who say that autism is out there, like they think 90% of it is just made up, like we're just self-diagnosing. And by the way, all three of our kids have been professionally diagnosed by psychologists, social workers. I think we had a neurologist in there, PhDs, so on and so forth. So this isn't something we're just pulling out of our hat. Um, we wanted to make this video to help others who have maybe said the same thing themselves. And so maybe you're receiving this video from a family where their kid says they have autism and maybe you're a little bit doubting or skeptic, or maybe you just want to have more answers to your questions. I think the main reason why people think that certain kids aren't autistic is because they're used to seeing autism portrayed a certain way in the media, um, on YouTube videos even, for sure. Um, especially with severe autism. So they, they see people in wheelchairs, they see people biting themselves, people screaming. Um, I, I went to uh, one church in, in California, we were just traveling, walked in and I heard the screaming and immediately went towards it to, to see what was going on. And there was this girl biting herself, you know, all over the arm, she had just bite marks everywhere, screaming. And I, I asked the mom, and I was trying to be nice, from one autistic parent to another, I'm like, so I'm, I'm assuming your child has autism. Is there any way I can help? And she almost gave me this look like, what, what was the giveaway? You know, like, was it the bite marks? Was it the screaming? And not every autistic kid is like that. Not every autistic person is like that. Um, there's, that's why they call it a spectrum. Obviously, you probably heard that before. Um, but because of that, because we see severe autism, it's very readily noticeable. Um, people get it right away. When it comes to higher functioning, you have to kind of stick around to see what you can see. So with our kids, uh, for example, Connor is a great example. He's probably, from what we can tell, our highest functioning in terms of neurotypical child that we have. We mainstreamed him into a uh, normal classroom. So he's now in the first grade. He's going to be in the second grade after summer. And he actually passed a lot of first grade level criteria. So anyway, when it, when it comes to the high functioning, um, Connor looks, for lack of a better term, normal or neurotypical. And it isn't until people get to know him a little bit better that they start to notice some of the, the quirky things that he does. So when he first went to class, most people are like, oh, is he autistic? Do we really need to worry about him? Well, he ran away. We have other videos about that. Um, three times he ran away. And then they finally got someone to watch over him. And then they started helping him with some of his quirks, like he would kick his feet a lot and fidget. So they put a little rubber band strap underneath his desk um, to help him with that. Um, just so he can bounce his legs, have something to, to push against, which helps him um, with his spatial awareness and feeling. Um, another thing that a lot of his classmates noticed and actually picked on him at first four was his humming and his ticking, because he would just sit there and kind of rock and hum and tick, like you see some autistic people do. So sometimes you have to kind of, you know, peel the layers back and um, get to know these people before you can make that kind of a call. Um, a lot of times, and Am I in no way comparing cancer to autism? One's a disease, one's a disorder. Um, but in the same way, in the same fashion, a lot of people, um, they don't see cancer on the outside. Apparently there's a velociraptor. So that's obvious. <laughs> I, at least I hope it's obvious now. So yeah, a lot of people will be like, oh, every kid growls and stuff like that. Yes, we know. There are, are, there are things that parallel each other 
and yeah, it's not always an immediate call. So maybe there's a kid throwing a tantrum in a Walmart and then you see an ASD kid do it. And it's not always easy to tell um, at first blush when one is just a normal kid tantrum and one's a sensory meltdown. We've covered this in other videos. Um, best thing to do is just ask the parent or, or whomever's involved, you know, how can I help? Is, is your child autistic? Um, that's probably the best thing you can do uh, is just withhold judgment, give the benefit of the doubt. And yes, there are people who self-diagnose and say, yeah, my kid's autistic because I watched uh, something on WebMD. But I think they're in the vast majority, minority, excuse me, they're in the vast minority. Most people have gotten their kids diagnosed or are trying to. Um, so hopefully you can give them a little bit of slack. So I did want to talk a little bit about passing. Um, basically, in short, passing means you are trying to pass um, someone who is autistic off as a normal or neurotypical person. So that involves scripting. They'll rehearse lines like, how are you today? Nice to see you. Nice weather we're having. And it seems normal at first until you pry a little and you ask more questions or you give more answers. So they'll approach you and be like, how are you? My name's Ian, our son's name. Um, it's nice weather we're having. And then you say, yeah, it is nice weather we're having. I heard down in uh, uh, Southern California, they've had like, I don't know, five months worth of sunshine and no rain. What do you think about that? And then they'll be like, I like T-Rexes. And so you're like, wait, what? Like this has nothing to do with the subject. So as you pry a little further, as you get more into it, you'll start to notice um, that something's a little off color. And yes, sometimes with higher functioning kids, you can see um, issues at play. We, we've shared many different videos about stimming and clicking and humming and things like that. Um, little indicators for you to, that you can see um, that help you understand that something's going on there with um, someone with an autistic mind um, versus how they are normally. Sometimes they're just calm and they just look like normal little kids and there's nothing wrong in their lives. Um, so it just takes some time, especially with higher functioning kids, getting to know them. So yeah, there is some controversy as to whether or not passing is a good or bad thing. I think it depends where they are on the spectrum. Um, as we've said many other times, it's good to have a compromise, especially with higher functioning, where um, you can learn you know, neurotypical behaviors and people who are neurotypical can learn autistic behaviors. So there's kind of a happy medium, a middle ground, uh, or meeting of the minds, kind of like learning two different languages um, so you can communicate better with people. Um, so yeah, a lot of people are like, no, you know, you shouldn't force autistic kids to pass. Um, but I don't think it's really about forcing anyone to do anything. It's just a helpful thing. Again, like learning another language. So in short, um, there's a lot more we could talk about um, when it comes to someone not looking autistic, but um, kind of like how I was comparing to uh, cancer and stuff like that. Not that they're the same, you know, one's a disease, one's a disorder, but um, you can't always see what's going on in the inside. So like with cancer, um, someone might be in stage one or stage two, or maybe they're wearing a wig and they're in stage four because all their hair is missing and they just look normal to you, but inside they're suffering. Same thing with autism. They might look normal at first blush, um, but something is going on inside and you might not see it, but it doesn't mean it isn't there. You can't see pancreatic cancer, doesn't mean it isn't there. So I hope that was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any comments or questions. Um, if you've had any experiences where people said your child doesn't look autistic, I think we've all had them. Um, some of them are kind of funny stories. Some of them are very sad stories, but want to hear them all. And um, appreciate you guys watching this video and spreading more awareness about autism and especially about children who get picked on because a lot of people don't know that they're autistic. And a lot of families are in denial about this too. Some parents don't want to admit that their kids have autism. And what do they say? Admitting is the first step. <laughs> so... Anyway, best of luck with, with this video and sharing it with others to, to help others understand. And um, thanks again for watching.